Income tax 2021-2022 rental property special situations part two. Get ready to get refunds to the max diving into income tax 2021-2022. Most of this information can be found in publication 527 residential rental property tax year 2021 IRS website irs.gov irs.gov income tax formula looking at line one income we would have a subschedule basically an income statement with income and expenses expenses basically being deductions the net then what rolls in to line one income as well as eventually page one of the form 1040 this is the schedule e basically the income statement schedule the supplemental income and loss we're focusing in on the rental real estate so we're continuing on our discussion we're looking at the renting of property so if you rent part of your property you must divide certain expenses between the part of the property used for rental purposes and the part of the property used for personal purposes as the you actually had two separate pieces of property so this is another area where of course the confusion comes into play if we have for example our personal residence and we rent part of that residence now we've got a situation similar to a business situation where we have mixing of kind of <laughs> the business and the personal which makes it more difficult to calculate the business versus the personal and we need to do so in part for the tax calculation so you would think that you might need some kind of ratio analysis to determine those expenses that are going to be deductible for the business side of things the rental side of things versus those that might not be deductible and certainly are not deductible as the rental kind of component although they might be deductible somewhere else such as for example on a schedule a so you can deduct the expenses related to part of the property used for rental purposes such as home mortgage interest mortgage insurance premiums and real estate taxes as rental expenses on the schedule e now notice that some of those expenses you might also be able to deduct say on the schedule a if it was for personal use in other words we've got the normal situation for income taxes usually the things that would be deductible are those things that you needed to use in order to help to generate the income so that the income tax would not be imposed on the gross income but rather the net income that's just what you would think would be fair for natural income taxes that's kind of how the schedule e works so if you were on the schedule e you got those things that are necessary to generate the income that would be a natural deduction for an income tax but on the schedule a you will recall that we have other things that aren't as natural to income taxes that could be deductible for say a personal residence things like the mortgage interest things like the state taxes possibly so then we could have this kind of allocation between being able to deduct these items in different places and we got to make sure that we get the allocation uh, uh leveled out uh, properly on it and again it, it might be more beneficial sometimes to deduct from the schedule e in some cases because then you won't have the limitations that you might have on the schedule a that you that you could have such as the the uh whether you're going to be itemizing or not although the schedule e could have limitations too such as losses uh and the capacity to deduct losses so in any case you can also deduct deduct as rental expenses a portion of other expenses that are normally non-deductible personal expenses such as expenses for electricity or painting the outside of the house so these are things that you couldn't deduct if it was your principal residence because it's a principal residence and the general rule would you don't get to deduct personal stuff but if it's rental property then you would think you get to deduct part of that there is no change in the type of expenses deductible for the personal use part of the property generally these expenses may be deducted only if you itemize your deductions on the schedule a so those kind of things that you would deduct as an itemized deduction the mortgage interest and the taxes for example those kind of expenses on the personal side could be deducted on the schedule a if you itemize possibly if it was for personal use versus the rental use so you can't deduct any part of the cost of the first phone line even if your tenant have have unlimited use of it you don't have to divide the expenses that belong only to the rental part of your home for example if you paint a room that you rent or pay premiums for liability insurance in connection with renting a room in your home your entire cost is a rental expense if you install a second phone line strictly for your tenants use all the cost of the second line is deductible as a rental expense now obviously 
because in these in like in that case you wouldn't have the second line if it wasn't for the the rental as opposed to you know obviously the first phone line that you would have even if you didn't have the rent so you can deduct depreciation on the part of the house used for rental purpose as well as the furniture and equipment you use for rental purposes so that could be a big deduction it gets a bit confusing again because now you've got the whole property you're only renting basically part in part of it the cost you got to figure the cost and the basis of the property and so on and then the portion of the property that's being rented being the amount that you can calculate the depreciation on so how to, to divide expenses you might add ask if an expense is for both rental use and personal use such as mortgage interest and heat for the entire house how must divide the expense between rental and personal use you can use any reasonable method for dividing the expense so you, any reasonable method so now you, we got to be reasonable but i don't want to be reasonable i want to deduct a whole bunch of stuff so but no we're going to be reasonable here so okay it may be reasonable to divide the cost of some items for example water based on the number of people using them so if you're if you know that would be a reasonable basis right we're trying to find some allocation between between the water bill and we can think about how many people are in the home and that could be one way that we could do our allocation that might not now notice there you do you're using like different activity basises you might not use that same method to allocate other things such as like painting the outside of the house or something like that might not really tie out to you might use square footage or something like that ratio to figure it out so the two most common methods of dividing an expense are one the number of rooms in your home and two the square footage of your home so that would be the most common kind of thing to do you'd say okay well here's my square footage for the rental space divided by the square footage for the whole space that ratio is the thing that you're usually going to be used that would be using the main or one activity base as they might call for for everything but you could use these other reasonable things for other kind of measurements if you wanted to such as the number of people using the water uh to do the, to do the allocation that might be you know another method you could use you'd come up to a different number than you would if you just used like the square footage of the rental property most likely you'd come up with a different number than if you use like the number of people and so on so example uh, you rent a room in your house the room is 12 by uh, 15 feet or 180 square feet uh, your entire house has 1800 square feet uh, of floor so you can deduct as rental expense 10 percent of any so we're dividing that out obviously so we, we measure we took out the trusty ruler and measured out the square footage of that one space the 12 times the 15 we got the 180 divided by the total square feet of the home that gives us the 0.1 if we multiply times 100 that's the 10 10 percent so you can you can deduct as rental expense 10 percent of any expense that must be divided between rental use and personal use if your heating bill for the year for the entire house was 660 dollars Six, 600 times the 10 percent is the rental expense the balance 540 is a personal expense that you can't deduct so duplex a common situation is the duplex where you live in one unit and rent out the other certain expenses apply to the entire property such as mortgage interest and real estate taxes and must be split to determine rental and personal expenses example you own a duplex and live in one half rent in the other half both units are uh, are approximately the same size last year you paid a total of ten thousand dollars mortgage interest and two thousand dollars real estate taxes for the entire property you can deduct five thousand half of it because they're approximately the same size we said mortgage interest and one thousand real estate taxes on schedule e if you itemize your deductions include the other five thousand mortgage interest and one thousand real estate taxes when figuring the amount you can deduct on schedule a so itemized deductions the part that was personal versus the schedule e for the part that was rental for the types of things that you might get a deduction either way depending on if it if you can get the itemized deductions that being the mortgage interest and the real estate taxes not rented for profit so if you're not renting it for profit this often happens like in in family units where things get quite complex and now you've got a rental agreement where it's not an arm's length transaction and uh, so so that 
complicates things. So, so if you don't rent your property to make a profit, you can't deduct rental expenses in the excess of the amount of your rental income. So you, they're skeptical, of course, of losses in that case, in, in those cases, if it's not for profit, because then, you know, if you gifted something, say, to a, a sibling or you know, a child, and they're using the property, and then you're taking a loss on, on it because you're not co collecting the proper amount of rent that you would get if you rented it to someone else and so on. So you can't deduct a loss or carry forward to the next year any rental expenses that are more than your rental income for the year. So where to report? Report your not-for-profit rental income on Schedule 1, Form 1040, Line 8I. If you itemize your deductions, includes your mortgage interest and mortgage insurance premiums. If you use the property as your main home or second home, real estate taxes and casualty losses uh, from your not-for-profit rental activity, when figuring the amount, you can deduct on Schedule A, presumption of profit. So no, when you when you argue with the IRS about it, then now you've got you've got this question. The IRS saying, was it were you in it for profit or not? You know, where am I innocent till proven guilty, or does the IRS you know take in the stance that I'm guilty until I prove innocent? Which sometimes, uh, it, you know, that's these are two different stances that uh, when you get in the argument with the IRS. So if your rental income is more than your rental expenses for at least three years out of uh, out of a period of five consecutive years, you are presumed to be renting your property to make a profit. So that's good because in the event of an audit, then you know, you're know you kind of more on the innocent until proven guilty situation. Whereas if not, then you're more on the guilty till proven innocent situation, which is a bigger hurdle to overcome. And for taxes, that becomes kind of a big, a big thing because you know, you know where the IRS is going to stand, what they have to prove, in, in order. And you have a similar kind of thing on the Schedule C, by the way. Are you in it for profit versus kind of like a hobby type of situation? So postponing decision. If you are starting your rental activity and don't have three years showing a profit, you can elect to have a presumption made after you have five years of experience required by the test. You may choose to postpone your decision of whether the rental is for profit by filing Form 5213. Uh, you must file Form 5213 within three years after the due date of your return, determining whether extensions for the year in which you first carried on the activity or, if earlier, within 60 days after receiving written notice from the IRS proposing to disallow deductions attributable to the activity. More information. So more information. Uh, about the rules for an activity not engaged in for-profit. You can see not-for-profit activities in Chapter 1 of Publication 535. Example, property changed uh, to rental use. In January, Eileen bought a condominium apartment to live in. Instead of selling the house she had been living in, she decided to change it to rental property. So she, she selected a tenant and started renting the house on February 1st. Eileen uh, charged $750 a month for the rent and collects herself. Uh, she also received $750 security deposit from her tenant because she plans to return it to her tenant at the end of the lease. She doesn't include it in her income. So it's a security deposit. Her rental expenses for the year are as follows. Mortgage interest, fire insurance, miscellaneous repairs, real estate taxes coming out to 1,800, 100, 297, 1,200 respectively. Uh, she must divide the real estate taxes, mortgage interest, and fire insurance between the personal use of the property and the rental use of the property. She can deduct, deduct 11 twelfths of these expenses as rental because she rented it uh, she moved in January, so she she moved 11 months was rental, one month was personal use. So you got the ratio of 11 twelfths. So she can all, she can include the balance of the real estate taxes and mortgage interest when figuring the amount she can deduct on Schedule A if she itemizes. She can't deduct the balance of the fire insurance because it is a personal expense. Uh, she bought this house in 1987 for 35000 Her property tax was based on assessed values of 10000 for the land and 25000 for the house. Before changing it to rental property, she added several improvements to the house. She figures her adjusted basis as follows. 
So now she changed from a personal to a rental. So now we got to have the lesser of the adjusted basis versus the fair market value of the house. So the house cost 25,000, the remodeled kitchen 4,200, a uh, recreation room 5,800, new roof 1,600 and a patio and deck for 2,400 to come up to the adjusted basis of $39,000. Uh, dollars on February when she changed her house to rental property the property had a fair market value of one hundred fifty two thousand uh, dollars uh, of this amount so notice again when you look at the fair market value it's going to include land and building or building and land you're looking for the building amount because that's the depreciable amount of this amount thirty five thousand was for land and one hundred and seventeen was for the house because she adjusted basis in, is less than the fair market value of the date of the change, she uses the 39, which is substantially less and a substantial non-benefit <laughs> to, to be using. But that's the way it, that's the way it works out on it. You got to use a lesser of. So as specified for residential rental property, she must use the straight line method of depreciation over the GDS and ADS recovery period. She chooses the GDS recovery period of 27.5 years note that i'm kind of complaining about using the lesser of the values notice that they could have they could have been worse on it they could have just they could have said that you had to recognize a gain at that point in time and pay taxes on the gain so right by by taking the lesser of and not going up to the fair market value if it increased in value like if they let you just skip up to the increase in value then it would it you know that would be like a, a nice tax tax thing because basically you wouldn't be paying the gain on the increase in the value which you don't usually do until you realize it and so they could have they could have been worse off they could have said we're going to force you to realize the gain when you convert from personal to rental property but instead they keep the lower basis so that uh, you'll recognize you know you don't get the depreciation you recognize the gain when you sell it but in any case so uh or recover she chooses the gds recovery period of 27.5 years okay she uses table 2 2d to find her depreciation percent because she placed the property in service in february the percent is 3.182 that's the depreciation of the property on april 1st she bought a new dishwasher for the rental property at a cost of 425 dollars the dishwasher's personal property used in the rental real estate activity which has five-year recovery period we talked about that in the past she uses table 22a to find the depreciation percent for year one under the half year conversion 20 percent to figure her depreciation deduction uh, on may 1st she paid four thousand dollars to have a furnace installed in the house that's nice the tenants will like that the furnace is a residential rental property because she placed the property in service in may the depreciation percent from table 22d is 2.273 she figures her net rental income or loss for the house as follows. So she's got the total rental income for the 11 months. She rented it 750 times the 11 for the 8,250. And then she's got the mortgage interest, which is the 1,800 times 11 twelfths because she rented it for 11 out of 12 years. The fire insurance was the 100 times the 11 twelfths. The miscellaneous repairs which is going to be just the 298 97 because she did those just for the rental property so she doesn't have to multiply it times the 11 twelfths. the real estate taxes 1200 on the year times 11 twelfths, and that gives us the total expenses of the 3139 for a balance of the 8250 minus the 3139 or 5111 then she's got depreciation of the 39000 which was the lesser of the adjusted basis of the fair market value which was the adjusted basis in our case and then she's got the dishwasher depreciation and the furnace that she bought for the tenants which i think they're really going the tenants will really like that so that's going to give us the total depreciation of the 1417 so we have the 5000 one 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 minus the one thousand four seventeen gives us the three thousand six ninety four here also note that the mortgage interest and you know the real estate taxes for example might be deductible on the schedule a for that one month 
that it was still personal property for the principal residence. So she uses Schedule E Part 1 to report her rental income and expenses. She enters her income expenses and depreciation for the house in the column for Property A. Because all property was placed in service this year, Elaine must use the Form 4562 to figure the depreciation. And you'd also have depreciation schedules, most likely, that might not be required to attach to the return. She, she see the instructions for Form 4562 for more information on preparing the form.